Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna do a prediction, a top 10 prediction of the Mr. Olympia 2023 that is happening in only 5 days, it's almost there guys, and I wanna tell you what do I think, who's gonna place in that top 10 in which order. So take a look at the official list of the qualified competitors, it is much easier to predict the top 10 this year, because last year there were 36 freaking guys on that stage. And now this year we have only 24 qualified competitors and 6 of them are out. They pulled out for different reasons, so we are left with 18 competitors, which I think is great. There should not be 4 different callouts of the competitors, we don't even know their names of. Mr. Olympia should be only the very best. I think it's very easy to predict who's gonna be in that top 10, let's say top 9, I'm not really sure about the 10th spot, but 9 guys are definitely gonna be in that top 10, and I highlighted their names, as you can see, we got uh, Harry Chopin, Derek Lansford, Nick Walker, Brendan Curry, Samson Dauda, Michael Crisio, Andrea Presti, Hunter Labrada, and Andrew Jacked. And then the rest of the guys are highlighted in green, and I don't know who's gonna be in that top 10, but I'm gonna say it's going to be Regan Grimes, but I think it's gonna be very close between him, Antonio Burton, and potentially Hassan Mustafa, if he brings the shape. So Antonio Burton has like crazy aesthetics, crazy genetics, he has that super bubbly and round physique, he always comes in really conditioned, so he can challenge Regan, but Regan is just much bigger in stature, and I believe he's gonna bring something better this year than Mr. Olympia, so I have Regan ahead of him, and Hassan Mustafa is just like a really crazy wild card, if he is shredded, he can be higher than 10 but he hasn't really been known for consistency, I have no idea what he's gonna bring, so I can't have him in my top 10, but he's right out there. The other guys like Ross Flanagan, Phil Klahar, Justin Shire, Roman Fritz, Theo, Charles Griffin, yeah, I don't see those guys in the top 10, not really, they're all pretty much new, I mean, Tia was beaten by Regan a couple of times, Charles Griffin has a pack tear, Roman Fritz is awesome, I'm a big fan, but he's not really on that level, uh, he was beaten by, by, by Regan a couple of times this year, also, Justin Shire, his first Mr. Olympia, he's definitely probably the smallest guy in this in this lineup right here, Phil Klahar, I mean, he's over 50, and I don't know what he's gonna bring, what his stomach is gonna look like, and uh, Ross Flanagan, he's like also a new guy who just won a pro show, I think, first time in his life, and also he's a smaller guy, so I believe that 10th is gonna be battle between Regan Grimes, Hassan Mustafa, and Tony Burton. and personally, I will say, 10th place will go to Regan Grimes, because he has that beautiful structure, pretty shape, he has a really big frame, and I believe this year, at the Mr. Olympia, he's gonna be in the best shape of his life, the biggest also, so yeah, top 10, I think it's pretty realistic, now, in 9th place, I have Andrea Presti, who is always really conditioned, really crispy, has a really freaky physique, legs are not exactly the biggest, that's his basically his biggest flaw, quads and hamstrings both, but he has that crazy crispy condition, he's like a really big guy, he has a really big frame, wide shoulders, I think he's gonna be 9th. Now, 8th place, Hunter Labrada, yeah, I know, he was 4th 2 years ago, and 7th last year, Personally, I think he's gonna drop down one spot this year, I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen, I mean, if we assume that he's gonna look like the way he looked at Tampa, which was his absolute best, which was when he was super, super conditioned, maybe he's gonna place higher, but I doubt it, I mean, I don't know how the hell he beat Nick Walker those two years ago, I believe he had something to do with his name, with his popularity, because of his father, but really, I mean, I don't find his physique that much impressive, I mean, he has the size, he knows he can bring condition, he brought it once, but I don't know, I mean, he didn't really prove to be consistent, he basically brought conditioning once in his life at Tampa, and he was decently conditioned at Texas against Andrew Jack, but it wasn't him at his best. And also, his coach, Ben Chow, just spoke at Fu Arabia's podcast, talking about his anxiety and how stress can affect him, and this is a big show, so I'm expecting him to, to mess something up. I don't think he's gonna peak and be at his best, but even if he doesn't, he's gonna be in that top 8, which is really good, but for somebody who plays 4 two years ago, it's not that great. And I can predict another thing for Hunter, I think if he doesn't place higher than 8, he's probably gonna retire. That's the impression that I get based on his posts, based on what he's talking on podcasts and stuff like that. We'll see, but yeah, my prediction for Hunter, 8.
In seventh spot, I have Michal Krizo. I believe Krizo is gonna beat Hunter this year and place in the top seven. I mean, last year he was, I believe, twelfth. And there are less guys this year, and he looked so much better at the show that he won this year uh, and Pro Cup. I mean, he was super conditioned, his stand was much better, his posing was better. At a Mr. Olympia, he basically had no tan. I don't know what happened, but he was his stand was so, so off, and uh, his conditioning is definitely way, way better this year. And his posing was better at that last show, and I believe it's gonna be even better at a Mr. Olympia. And with his crazy, insane-looking genetics, with his crazy wow factor, I don't think there is a bodybuilder who looks more impressive in the gym today, like in real life. He has the height, he has crazy arms, he has crazy conditioning when he brings it, and he brought it, we saw it. He doesn't have the best, the thickest glutes, but that's basically the only flaw. What other flaws can you find on his physique? Like, maybe you can argue that his structure could be more pleasing to someone's eyes. I mean, for me, I love his structure. I think he's super gifted as a bodybuilder. And I think if he brings conditioning again, the way he did at the last show, and he presents himself well, he puts the right tan on, top 7 is the worst placement for Mikhail Grigio. He might even crack the top 6. We'll see, but for now, I have him in 7th, which is, I think, amazing for him. Alright, now it becomes tricky. That top 6 is really freaking hard to predict, and I'm sure many of us will be wrong, but I will give you my best assessment, what I believe is gonna happen. So, in 6th, personally, I have Andrew Jacked. No, I don't see Andrew Jacked beating Brandon Curry, not this year. I don't think he made enough progress. Like, at the Texas, I don't think he looked that much better than he did at the Arnold or the Texas the year before. I mean, he was, like, more conditioned, maybe more matured. Uh, like, his back was better, I could say that. But he didn't gain that thickness, that roundness, that size, the mass that somebody like Brandon Curry has, right? I mean, Brandon is, like, really round, really big, like, he has the 3D, he, he's just a, a really big blob of muscle, I mean, with aesthetics as well, not like that, but Andrew is a little bit too stringy, you know, he's very tall, he's not as thick from the sides, he doesn't have that roundness in the legs and the hamstrings from behind, his back is not that massive, not yet, it is very detailed, it's wide, it's, it's aesthetic and all that, he's conditioned, sure, I mean, he doesn't have the best details in the glutes and hamstrings, but so doesn't Brandon, but he's just not big enough. I mean, he is beautiful, he has a really beautiful shape and all that, but not big enough, not yet, so, I mean, it's a very close battle, if you ask me, the way I feel right now, so I wasn't sure, but in the end I decided to say that Andrew Jack is gonna place 6th, and obviously 5th is going to be Brandon Curry. Brandon Curry already won the Mr. Olympia, and he placed 2nd twice, so that is a, a, an insane achievement, that, that's huge, that's big. Maybe we should expect him to place higher this year. Maybe last year was just a hiccup. Maybe he's gonna be much better this year. I mean, we got a physique update that he posted yesterday at around five, actually a week out of Mr. Olympia. And you can see what he looks like. I think his conditioning is gonna be better than last year. But it's not like a completely different physique. He's not really changing. Like, he's the, the same. And the other guys are progressing. And at his age, it's amazing that he's staying the same, that he still looks so fresh, so big, so round, he's not really losing any size in any of the muscle, but the other guys are progressing at a really fast rate. So I don't think he can keep up. I think this year he's gonna fall down one spot, which I think it's great. Like, those four guys, those four guys are really freaking good. Hadi, Derek, Nick, and Samson, those guys are really, like, on another level right now. So I don't think Brandon Curry can challenge them. Unless he brings something that we never saw of Brandon Curry, but it's not gonna happen. I mean, we can already see what he looks like. It's gonna be pretty similar to last year, hopefully the same. I and mean, hopefully he's not gonna be worse. As long as he looks fresh, as long as he didn't lose it completely, as long as he looks pretty much the same like last year, with a little bit better conditioning, in my prediction, he's fifth. Alright, now it gets really tricky, now it gets spicy, now it's gonna be really hard to say who's gonna place where, 
unless I go with basically the same result like last year, I believe the majority of people will disagree because my prediction for top 4 is a little bit bold. It's not exactly the safest way to go, but this is the hunch that I have. So let's wait and see if I'm right. Personally, in fourth, I have Hari Japan. I know, I know, he just won the Mr. Olympia. He was in that top 3, top 4 for a couple of years. But, like, for how long will he be at the top of his game? For how long? I mean, he is not a youngster. And for the past three years, he didn't really change that much. Some years he was more, and some years he was less conditioned. Some years he was fuller, some years he was a little bit flatter. But that's Hari Japan. I mean, he didn't really change too much. So I'm expecting something very similar to last year. And the other three guys, I believe they're gonna be like 30% better, all of them. And the thing is, with his age, Hadi might even look much worse this year, for example. It's not impossible. Like last year, we all thought Big Remy is gonna win the show easily. We all thought that. He showed up, he was all messed up, and it happened in one year. So it happens with age, with time. You know, and it can happen with Hadi. If it doesn't happen to him, in my opinion, best case scenario for Hari Japan is he stays the same. And the other guys progress a lot. So in that case, again, I have him in fourth. I don't think he can beat those three younger, hungrier, new, fresher guys. So that's my take. I believe Hari is going to drop down to fourth. I know it's a bold prediction, but it's just a hunch. That's how I see it. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. So we come to the top three. Derek Lansford, Nick Walker, and Samson Dauda. So we have Samson, who is known to make a lot of progress from show to show. We have Derek Lansford, who finally had an entire year to focus on growing, to focus on open bodybuilding. Last year, that wasn't the case. Derek wasn't sure if he was gonna do the Open or the 212 until he decided to start prepping for the Open. So, in the end, I think he looked pretty much the same like he did in 212. He was just bigger and fuller because he didn't have to cut down and make the weight. Now, he had an entire off-season and maybe he made a ton of progress. Maybe he is not even able to make a lot more progress. Maybe he picked his physique and that's about as good as it gets. And then you have Nick Walker, who is basically, in my opinion, the most passionate guy about the sport, who is willing to do whatever it takes, who doesn't really have the best genetic structure-wise, but with what he's got, he's done so much, and I think he's gonna do so much more. He always maxes out all the factors that he can max out, like growing new tissue, like coming in super shredded, like posing perfectly. Like he can go forever, basically. His stamina on the stage is insane. His control is crazy. He knows really how to present his physique the best way possible. In the transitions, he won't lose any ground. And I know that he's gonna be at his absolute best this year. We all can see the photos, we all saw what his weight was like. I mean, he didn't have an entire off-season, but this might be the best case scenario for Nick because he doesn't really need that much size. He needs fine-tuning, he needs adding maturity, he needs adding as much detail as possible. So, I believe Nick Walker has a really good chance of winning the Mr. Olympia title. And so does Derek, and so does Samson, and I would say Hadi does as well. But I have to place them somewhere. They can't all win. Somebody has to be in 4th, 3rd and 2nd. So, as I said, in 4th, I have Hadi. In 3rd, can you guys guess who I have in 3rd? I don't think you can. In 3rd, I have Derek Lansford. That's right. I know the majority of the people today have Derek Lansford winning the Mr. Olympia. And it's really hard to argue that he's going to win. But there is one argument that most of us didn't really take into consideration and Samson made it on the new podcast that I watched of him and I think it's a really good argument. Like he said that we haven't really seen any of he any of Derek's front poses and side poses. We only see his back. And he had the best back even last year. Even if his back is the same like last year, it's probably going to beat everyone's back on that stage. If it is a little bit better, it's gonna be a more convincing victory in the back poses. But what about the front poses? 
Is he gonna be soft again through the upper chest, through the shoulders? What his side shots are gonna look like? What his chest and his arms and his delts are gonna look in the side shots? That's the question. We really haven't seen a lot, and I'm making this prediction based on what I saw, based on what I know, based on everything I saw so far, I think Derek is gonna be below both Samson Dauda and Nick Walker. Now, I know that Derek has a really good wee taper, really pretty shape from the front, and I know that his legs are gonna be much bigger, much improved, and that X taper is amazing, but the only reason why I think he's gonna place below is because I think he's gonna be soft again from the front and from the sides, and I don't think it's gonna be enough to beat this new version, these new versions of Nick Walker and Samson Dauda, because I think both of them are gonna be much, much different than last year. Once again, anything is possible, it's a really close call, Derek could win the show very easily. I'm not saying that he's not going to, but this is the way I think it's gonna play out. Now, as far as the second and the first, we are left with two guys, Samson Dauda and Nick Walker. And as they do it on the show, I'm gonna announce the winner in my prediction. And that's going to be, can you guys guess it? If you watch my videos regularly, you know who I had this entire time. But did I change it in the end? No, I didn't. I still have Samson Dauda becoming the new Mr. Olympia. I believe that's how it's gonna play out. I believe Samson is going to be much better than Arnold in much better condition, at the same size pretty much, full, blasting full, super massive, the biggest guy on that stage, he's going to dwarf pretty much everybody in that top four, and Mr. Olympia tends to be about the size, like the biggest guy usually has an advantage, and this year I believe Samson is going to be the most conditioned we ever saw him, and he's going to kill everybody with size, he's gonna be around 300 pounds on that stage, and he's not even that tall, I think he's like 6 foot or even below that, so at that height, 300 pounds of muscle with good condition, I think that's gonna be enough for a victory. Nobody's perfect, Samson has flaws, he's gonna have flaws on that stage, but I think with his size and with his new condition that he's gonna bring, I think it's just gonna be enough. I mean, we saw him at the Arnold against Nick Walker. Who thought that he was gonna beat Nick Walker? I mean, I didn't, but when he stepped on that stage with a little bit better conditioning than Mr. Olympia, he just dominated that stage, he was just so dominant, so big, he was commanding attention, he was commanding to get that trophy, to be the winner of that show, and I think exactly the same thing is gonna happen on the Mr. Olympia stage. Yeah, I think Nick Walker is gonna play second, I believe he is super, super driven, especially after he lost the Arnold Classic title, and I believe he made so much progress, it seems like he is going to be bigger than last year the Mr. Olympia with better conditioning, I think he improved his legs a lot, I think he's gonna be more mature and he's gonna show crazy amount of details, with his basically perfect posing, I think he's gonna beat both Hadi and Derek, but as far as beating Samson, I don't think that's gonna happen, if Samson stays the same like he was at the Arnold and Nick comes much improved, as I'm sure he will, then yeah, he can take him out, he can become the Mr. Olympia, like I said, all of those guys in the top four, in my opinion, have a really good chance of winning the title, but in my assessment, in my prediction, the way I see it, the way I feel like it's gonna go down, I believe Nick is gonna be second and Samson Dauda is going to be the 2023 Mr. Olympia. What do you guys think about my prediction? Tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for the best coverage of the Mr. Olympia and post-Olympia videos, there's gonna be a whole bunch of interesting videos next month, guys, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, guys, all the best, and bye-bye.